Because step eight, and I usually reserve this for the last, even though that's the first thing that you're gonna see when you're creating a resume. But I, I put this in the last part because then you have some idea already of what educational experience, what award certificate skills and experiences you might want to highlight after writing them all down. So step eight is to add a summary and objective statement. Number uh, Some guide questions here when you're writing this is number one, how would you describe yourself to the hiring manager? So this is now your opportunity to spoon feed to whoever's reading your resume what you want them to take away from your resume. So how would you describe yourself to the hiring manager? If you want to highlight some traits here, like some adjectives or adverbs that you would use to describe you, you can add that here. Another thing that you can do is um, choose which skills and experiences you want to highlight or you want them to remember from reading your resume. And then finally, for the objective statement, what kind of job are you looking for? So that they have some context to when they're reading your resume, okay, ano bang hanap ng person na to? So here's some examples so that here's some examples so that it's a bit more clear. For the first person, JM, um, JM is an accountant and finance professional in the making. So it gives them some idea of like this person's um, this person's aspirations. JM uh, wants to be an accountant or finance professional, and then. We go ahead and said, analytical and attentive to details, he often leads in group works for his classes. So that's what he wants to highlight. He's active in group works and he's analytical and he has attention to detail. And he also chose to highlight he is also active with his college organization, handling finances because of his budgeting skills. So again, we highlight that JM's budgeting skills because he wants to be a finance professional. Right. So, and we end with JM is now looking for opportunities in corporate finance and accounting. So that's the summary and objective statement of uh, of JM's resume. These are the things that he wants the recruiter or the hiring manager to remember about himself. Now let's go to Dayan. Dayan, on the other hand, is an aspiring back end developer, and she's looking for internship opportunities to learn more about APIs. So very specific, she's looking for internship opportunities to learn more about APIs, which is basically uh, a back-end structure, right? Um, she now goes on to highlight some skills that she learned herself. So she is self-taught in programming, and then she lists down the languages that she knows. And as a natural problem solver, so that's what Diane wants uh, the recruiter to remember about herself. She's a natural problem solver and she has the curiosity and perseverance to thrive in a fast-paced learning environment, right? So uh, she also wants to highlight that she is curious and she has perseverance. So again, the summary and objective statement are really good opportunities for you to highlight what you want the recruiter or hiring manager or whoever is reading your resume to remember about yourself, all right? I usually reserve this last because I want you to make it cohesive as well with what you're presenting in your in your resume already. So if you, you highlight, if you put some experiences, let's say, uh, related to your college organization and group works that you've done, then you might want to highlight that in your summary and objective statement. Okay. Um, now we talked about all the different parts of the resume, right? So you have your education, your skills, awards, work experiences. Did you know that you can rearrange the sections of the resume depending on the relevance to the job? So this is one way you can format it. I'm not saying you're going to remove some parts of it, but it, it's actually you can rearrange them according to how relevant they are to the job you're applying for. So I'll give you an example. We have JM and Diane's resume here. In JM's resume, because he graduated accounting, uh, sorry, accountancy in college and he's applying for finance jobs, his education, his educational background goes at the very top of his resume, as you can see. And then followed by his work experiences, and then we end with skills and then uh, his uh, certifications and his, his uh, relevant seminars, right? So that's what we end with education first and then we have we put the scales at the bottom because education matters a lot when you're applying for a finance job on the other hand 
we have Diane, who is uh, currently taking applied physics. So not necessarily directly related to being a back-end developer, right? So what she wanted to focus on instead in her resume are her skills. So we put the educational background at the very bottom of her resume. Um, and because she doesn't have a lot of experiences yet that she can cover, we put the skills at the very top of the resume. So after summary and objective, we focused on Diane's skills instead because that's what we want to uh, whoever is reading her resume to remember that no matter what her educational background is and her lack of experience, she does have the skills necessary to do this job. So this is what I want you to remember as well. So uh, try to rearrange also the parts of your resume depending on what you think is the strongest part of your resume. Because you want to put the strongest part of your resume first. So that's what people remember about you. Um, some of you might be applying for jobs already after you graduate um, your, your senior high school. Some of you might be looking for internships and you might not have a lot of experiences to show for yet. So you might want to put your skills and extracurricular activities more on top, more than your educational experience. Um, if you have certifications, that's also good as well. But I want you to remember that you are allowed to rearrange according to relevance so that you can um, you can somehow affect the impression that you're going to leave with the hiring manager or the recruiter reading your resume.